Hi guys, thanks for being here. Today I start a series of recordings about trichoscopy of alopecia areata and I will start with the basic trichoscopy structures which are important for the diagnosis of alopecia areata. Here they are. There are many ways of learning trichoscopy, either by memorizing the images or a way which I prefer by understanding trichoscopy. And today I will use the example of alopecia areata to show how easy trichoscopy is to understand when we know the basic mechanism behind every hair disorder. Let's begin with this example of a hair follicle in a patient with alopecia areata. It is usually surrounded by an inflammatory infiltrate, and this inflammatory infiltrate has a significant impact on the hair follicle and it affects the growth of the hair shaft. Let us imagine that this is a growing hair shaft in a patient with alopecia areata. Because there is a significant impact of the inflammatory infiltrate around the hair follicle, the hair shaft, as it grows, it will become thinner and thinner and weaker and maybe hyperpigmented at the base. So at the end effect, we will have a hair which is thick or rather normal thickness at the distal end and it is thin and hypopigmented at the base. And this is how an exclamation mark hair develops. This is how typical exclamation mark hairs look in trichoscopy. However, we can never be sure that exclamation mark hairs mean alopecia areata because there are some other diseases in which exclamation mark hairs may be present. And this is trichotillomania, toxic alopecia, drug-induced alopecia, chemotherapy-induced alopecia, and many more. So we have to look for other trichoscopy features of alopecia areata. So what can happen to an exclamation mark hair in real life? Well, the most probable thing is it becomes thinner and thinner and thinner until it breaks off. What will be happening is that the dark hair residue will stay in the hair follicle. It will be visible in the hair follicle opening from the perspective of a dermoscope and from the perspective of a dermoscope, it will look like a black dot, and these are the black dots. It may happen that the hair keeps growing because the insult to the hair follicle is not so profound, and then it becomes thinner and thinner and thinner, but never breaks off, and we call these hairs the tapered or the tapering hairs. The third option is that it keeps growing, but our treatment was successful and it becomes thicker again. And then there will be a constriction within this hair and then it grows normal again. And these are the so-called Paul Pincus constrictions. And let's, let's leave the other possibilities for the future slides. In this image, we see the typical black dots in trichoscopy. Are they typical for alopecia areata? Yes, they are. Are they specific for alopecia areata? No, they are not. There are many diseases in which the black dots may be present, and they include other types of anagen effluvium, but also trichotillomania, and even sometimes black dots may be present in patients with cicatricial alopecia. These are images of typical tapered hairs and typical Paul Pincus constrictions in patients with alopecia areata. Talking about the constrictions, it is extremely important to not misdiagnose monilatrix as alopecia areata because this may lead to very inadequate treatment decisions. Sometimes a predominant feature in the patient is a non-specific feature, such as trichorexis nodosa or the zigzag hairs. They may be present in patients with alopecia areata. So what more can happen with an exclamation mark hair? Well, when it breaks off, it is possible that a new hair starts growing. And these normal hairs, we call the upright regrowing hair. But sometimes the environment is still not very normal and the hair breaks off 
and the new hair starts growing but it does not have a shape of a typical upright regrowing hair it will uh, coil and this will form a so-called circle hairs or sometimes we call them the pigtail hairs a typical image of a patient with regrowing hairs in the course of alopecia areata and the blue arrows point to the pigtail hairs while the white arrows point to the upright regrowing hairs the yellow dots mark hair follicles which are empty in the meaning that they contain no hair shaft but they contain sebum and keratotic material which make them yellow So to summarize, these are the three main trichoscopy features of alopecia areata, the exclamation mark hairs, the black dots, and the yellow dots. Are they specific? Well, they are typical, but there may be diseases in which they are present. So I encourage you to look for other features of alopecia areata before you make the trichoscopy diagnosis. And if you would like to hear more about hair diseases and about trichoscopy, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, Professor Lydia Rudnitska. Thank you.